Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name's Anthony and in today's video, I'm gonna go through with you how to create a mood board. Now this is something that I've been asked quite a lot about. How do you create your mood boards? How do you research them? What kind of websites are you looking at? And what do you have to put in a mood board to make it successful? Now this video is the first section of a three part series that's gonna come out over the next few weeks. And each video is gonna concentrate on a different part of a fashion project. So this one is gonna be research a mood board. The next one is how to translate that information into your designs and what you need to do and the design process and all of that. And then the final one is how to fully make a tech pack. Now I've gone over what kind of information you need on a tech pack but I thought it'd be really good if I break down what you actually need to include and why. So, they're future videos, but in this video we're going to talk about the mood board, the colour palette and the research aspect of the whole thing. But before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe, it really does help my channel to grow, especially that like button, you have no idea how much it helps promote my video and boost it within the YouTube's algorithm. Please also leave a comment because I like to chat to you guys and get to know you a little bit better and build this fashion community up. Okay, so let's just get straight into the video. Mood boards, research, how to create them, what should you be looking for? For. So the first thing is, if you have received a project from a company or you want to start a project or you're at college or university and you want to do a fashion project, then the first thing to look at is the season that you want to do it. So for example, in this video, we're going to concentrate on spring, summer 22. At the beginning stages of any research, you really need to think about what is going to be going on around that timing and kind of focus your research on them kind of events and things that are happening. It doesn't necessarily happen have to be like that but if you're going to be doing commercial fashion you need to have your finger on the pulse and know what is going on in the world to predict the trends for the future. Now if you're doing more avant-garde, haute couture, higher end design then the kind of trends that would be for fast fashion or anything like that might not apply but the research element still does. Now it's not the only place that I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at a few different things. I'm going to look at a few different categories that might pull me away from that initial thought but you always have to have an initial thought to be able to focus your trend and as you pull more and more images your trend might change completely and that's okay but you just have to follow the direction of what the research is taking you and this is really really important you have to pull images that you really like so I'll jump on my computer and I'll show you the research that I've done for this project and I'll show you how to pull together the mood board but before we do that I need to tell you about different areas that you should be researching in order to find all your images and I'll give you some websites and a breakdown of why you need them as well so these are the categories that you need to look at catwalk vintage brands key items mood really important and then this last one is interchangeable with whatever category you are looking for so i always do a materials and hardware because my main focus is accessories outerwear footwear and all of that is based on the material that you use but you could always swap this out for prints it could be graphics it could be anything that you feel like needs to be incorporated in your trend but you need to identify that as you're going in and from the brief that you're given so why do you need all of these different areas and what websites can you use to find them. Okay, well, let's start with design catwalks. Now, this is really relevant. You need to look at catwalks because you need to know what's on trend and what's going on with other brands to make sure that you're designing products that are on trend and that people are going to want. So, you can get catwalk images from websites like Vogue Runway, Tag the Walk, or even if you've got a subscription to WGSN, you can get it all from there. Now, WGSN is a big website for trend prediction, and I would say it's really, really good if you're in the fast fashion industry, but please, please, please do not rely on WGSN to much because it does saturate the market and yes they are predicting trends but there's other places that you can get trends from as well so don't just solely rely on WGSN you need to have a wide spectrum of influences and inspirational sources to make a great mood board so moving on vintage now I always say to look at vintage because it's really good to get good shapes it's really good to get materials and hardware inspiration and it's just a really good throwback so if you're doing a project you can always say you've looked at vintage inspiration you've looked at more modern try to combine the two and it makes you look more rounded as a designer. Now there are loads of vintage shops, there are loads of different online retailers that sell only vintage things. So I would suggest you google your local area and see what vintage shops there are around you. You would go in, visit, you could even buy some stuff because it should be really really cheap or 
just download the images from their website so you can get close-up shots, you can get detailed shots, you can get really good hardware and fabric inspiration from that. The next thing to look at is brands. Now, brands are really important. You need to look at the company that you're designing for's competitors. You need to look at what kind of things their competitors have got in their store, what fabrics they're using, what shapes they've got, and what kind of key demographic they are going after. So looking at brands is really important and then getting images as well to influence your inspiration and make sure that you've covered all of the commercial areas when it comes to your design. Now key items, this is a really important one. So key items is basically the best shapes that are on trend at the moment. So you need to be looking out and what are the kind of things that are popping up regularly throughout your research. So if you're seeing loads of duffel coats, make sure that you've got a section called duffel coats. If you see loads of bomber jackets or a certain kind of trainer or a certain kind of skirt or top or wherever it might be, make sure that you're collecting all of this information and having a separate file to put all of this key item research in because it will become very important as we go through making the mood boards and trends because I'm going to split out the mood boards into three sections where you've got mood, colour, fabrication, hardware and then you go into vintage research and key items. So key items is a must when you're researching. You need to know what's going on. Next you need to be pulling loads of information on what is the best fabric, what's the best hardware, what's going on in the market, is there something new that's coming out, is it neoprene, is it borg, is it shearling, what is the key materials and make sure that you're gathering all of that information alongside all of these different key items. And finally the most important place is mood. Now mood is subjective and it's quite tricky to get right. You just need to make sure that the mood that you're kind of gathering represents what you're trying to say in your mood board. Now obviously as you're doing research it's difficult to try and say what you're going to do in your mood board until you put it together but mood is a progressive kind of file that you will constantly update as you do the project so if you feel like you're missing a certain thing if you're feeling like you're missing a street shot or something like that you'll constantly research to try and find the perfect one and then add it in. And what I would suggest to do is make a file with all of these files in because it's gonna make it much easier when you're trying to decide what images should go in and it's not gonna make your illustrator run slow. You should have a different file for each one of the things that I've gone over. So catwalk, mood, vintage, brands, materials and hardware and key items. Make sure you've got a different file for each one of them and then go in and rename every single file to where you've got it from. So if it's from a catwalk, make sure that you put the designer's name at the beginning of the file name. If it's from a certain brand, make sure it's got the brand name there. Same for the key items. Mood, materials and hardware and vintage is a bit different because obviously they are not specific to a brand. You might not have to reference where you've got them from in the future. But if you're putting clothing or specific designers into your mood board, it's really good to know where they came from so you can reference them when you're talking through your project. Now I will say I've done a whole video on how to do design research and what the best websites are for researching. If you want to go and watch that, click here. It's a really good video. I talk about my top five different places to do design research. So I'm just going to jump on my computer quickly so I can show you a few different things. As you can see, I've got all my files set up and if I click in each one, there is a lot of research of different designers and different people that I found it from. The vintage research is all there. You know, you really have to go into detail. Research takes so much time and it actually should take the most time out of all the design process because to find all of this information and to really try and collate it all properly, it should take you a while. So here they all are, here's all the research. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull out different images that I feel are right for the mood that I'm trying to go in and I'll talk you through my elimination process and all of that. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my Illustrator open and I've also got the research file open as well. So I'm gonna go into Design Catwalk and I'm just gonna change it to Gallery View and I'm gonna make it so I can see the actual garments that I want. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift through and I'm gonna find images that I really like. Not all the images I'll use, but you know, a lot of them I'll try and pull into the document. So, you know, it's loads of images that I'm kind of feeling for for the vibe. So as I've said, I'm looking at Tokyo. So it needs to be around that. Just drag and drop them in. You can place them later. I decided to do my research before I even got the project because I knew it was coming. I didn't know whether it was going to be a spring, summer or an autumn, winter kind of project. So I just researched loads of different stuff. And it took me three days to do the research fully. 
So that's how long you need to do it. I really like the Celine collection, so I'm going to pull quite a few images from that. I think it's just a case of finding images that you really like and just pulling them all in and then working out the actual mood and the direction that you want to go in. I know that sustainability is a big thing and I want to make sure that this collection is going to be as sustainable as possible. Okay, and what you want to do is go through each category and start pulling in images that you think is right for the trend. The trend's gonna come to you eventually and you're gonna be able to sort it out, but just keep pulling images in and in and in until you get to a point where you're happy with the amount of images that you actually have in the document. And what you wanna do is go through each of your categories and pull the images from that category to create your mood board. Because in a mood board, it shouldn't just be mood images. You should have a cross section of loads of different things so bit of the catwalk, a bit of brand, bit of mood obviously and then maybe one or two key items. Ideally what you need to do is look for around 9 to 15 key images so pull as many images as you want from your files into Illustrator and then you can start playing with the images and trying to put them in a format that makes sense and that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so that is done now and what I've done is I've just added a few more images in, refined it, kind of cropped some of them, made some of them smaller, made some of them bigger and I kind of really tried to balance the whole mood board. This is a jacket kind of collection so there needs to be a lot of jackets on there but I didn't want to not include elements of mood or image or colour palette or anything like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to kind of pull a colour palette together and that's basically from this mood board. So what you're going to do is you are going to position it so you've got a bit of space somewhere and just make some empty circles or squares, whatever you want. I kind of like to work with circles and, and usually you want between maybe five to eight circles depending on how many colours you actually want to portray. And then you want to kind of pick out the key colours and the tool that you want to use to pull out your colours is the eyedropper tool. So all you have to do is press I on your keyboard and that pulls out your eyedropper tool. So I'm really liking this cream colour. I'm really liking this colour and basically the colour palette is coming from this kind of picture really. And then I'm kind of thinking maybe along the lines of this blue would be really nice maybe more of this light blue and then maybe this teal as well. So as you can see that is quite a nice spread of colours and I'm actually really happy with how them colours have come out. What I think I'm going to do is just tweak them slightly, make some of them slightly more yellow, slightly less kind of brash and harsh because don't forget these are going to go on jackets and things like that. So I can do that later on as long as you've kind of got the palette that you are thinking that you like. And then what you can also do is switch colours out in the future or if you're not sure if you want to put a certain colour in that's fine and then you'll go in and do your Pantones. Now Pantones is a reference for the actual colour so when they're making the actual colour to dye the fabric or the leather or wherever you're working with they've got a Pantone reference so they can get the exact colour that you want. Really all I do is once I've got the colours there I then just start googling Pantone colours because for a project like this if you're applying for a job they are not going to use the Pantones for actually dyeing up the fabric. It's just to show that you can do it. When you actually get into work environments, it's a lot more complicated because you need to actually choose Pantones from a Pantone book and sit there and actually choose the correct ones. So in a normal instance, when you're working every day, you wouldn't necessarily do everything over the computer. You would do it in real life with physical swatches. But for this, it's fine just to Google so you've got a general idea of the colour. Now that my mood board's done, my colour palette's done, what I'm planning to do is I'm going to place it on my sheet. So I'm going to place it on my sheet and as you can see I've got a border with my name on it so the person who is reading the project knows that it's mine and on every single page it should have that and the reference to your name so they know that it's your work. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up the extra sections here and here and that's going to be for my fabric and it's going to be for my hardware as well. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write in kind of a description to sort of talk through the project, the fabrics and the hardware. And that's when I'll kind of fill in the Pantones as well. Okay, so we are back. Now the full mood board is done, but obviously we need to go into other sections such as vintage and key items, which I'll go through with you in a bit. But this is basically the mood board page. And as you can see, I've added a little bit of text to each section. I've put titles on there and I've kind of laid it out so it's very easy to read. So if we just go through it, as you can see, I've named the project Shibuya Meltdown. Now Shibuya is a place in Tokyo and it's actually a Instagram profile that is hilarious and it just shows loads of people getting drunk in Tokyo and kind of the antics that they get up to. And I kind of thought that was a really good name for this project because it's all about the Tokyo underground. It's all about streetwear and I can read through the description so you can kind of see it. Shibuya Meltdown. As we emerge from lockdown, we look to the East for inspiration. Korea and Japanese street culture is a source of inspiration, along with architecture with its clean lines and utilitarian forms. Gone are the days of needless excess. Sustainability is a key takeaway from this trend, ensuring our future to come. And then these are the colour palettes, and as I said, these are the Pantones, and this is how I lay it out. So you've got your Pantone, the Pantone number, and the name. So as I said, you want between five and eight colours for your colour palette. And I would really focus on kind of core colours, wearable colours that really ground the collection, and then a few colour pops as well. So the colour pops can be anything from your bright blues, your bright pinks, or anything like that. But what you need to realise is these colour pops are going to be either one or two key pieces, or they are going to be the colour pops on the garments, the extra little pieces of detail that you're going to do in the future and all of that sort of stuff. What I did off screen is do my fabrication, so it was the same process as before, pulled all my fabric into this one mood board and kind of eliminated ones that I didn't feel worked well for the actual styling choices that I was going to do and then I wrote a nice little description to go with it. So, soft and supple leathers, playing with texture. Embossing and perforations for a more sports edge. Suede's are more neutral in tones with a simple, clean shape for an elevated look. With a focus on sustainability, using natural dyeing processes. That kind of encapsulates everything that I want to say about the material. And then we go into the hardware as well. So as you can see, loads of bits of different imagery for the hardware, just to try and portray the look that I want to do, which is burnished and tarnished in an antique finish for a prior loved aesthetic. Classic colours of antique gunmetal and brass. And that's kind of all you need to do for this section of the mood board. When it comes to the materials and hardware as well, you can even look through the images that you've already got and really kind of zoom in on them, screenshot them, crop them wherever you want to do to get the kind of images that you want for your mood boards. So really think of the different details that you like, think of the hardware and all of that sort of stuff. And if it's already on the garment, just zoom in on it and then reference it. Now what I will say is from here, you could either leave it to that and then go straight into your range. But I also think it's really good to dive in to the research that you've done. And because vintage is such a big thing at the moment, people love vintage shapes, people are loving vintage textures, materials, fabric, they're all about upcycling. Vintage is a great place to get good inspiration from. So I always do a vintage page, which is this page here. Now, as you can see, I've laid it out a little bit different and it's just basically pulling through all of my key influences when it comes to the vintage shapes. And you'll see in the next video how I have translated all of this information into the actual designs. But again, same process, you need to pull all your stuff onto the page, eliminate what you don't think is right for the trend, and really lay it out in a very nice appealing way on the page. Vintage shapes help to ground this collection with the military and utilitarian influences. Pocket shapes and details for added function, silhouettes to be slightly oversized with a drop shoulder. Statement waist belts, and then on the more casual side, suede and leather mixes for texture play. When it comes to the vintage inspiration, what you really want to do is make sure you've got a mixture of shapes, zoom in shots for details, and also a focus on pocket details, cuffs, 
shoulders, whatever it is, just to make sure that you've got a, a really good overview of the vintage market and how you can implement that into your design. And finally, let's talk about your key items. So this is the key items page that I've done. It's not got a lot of text on, it's just basically got the titles of each of the garments that are the key items. Now here I've gone for eight key items because the collection brief was saying between six and eight items, I wanted to make sure I got eight items. But in all honesty, when you're talking about a collection, it doesn't necessarily have to be eight key items that you're gonna use in your range or what you're gonna portray in your project, but you do have to have a good viewpoint and you have to have a direction in which you're going. So for instance, I've put suede shirts, denim detailing, gilets, oversized sweaters, field jackets, oversized bikers, modern varsity and joggers. Now specifically, this is a leather outerwear project, but I've included loads of different elements such as oversized sweaters, joggers, denim detailing, but I'm gonna convert all of this into leather outerwear. So I'll go over all of this in the next video when I talk about how to translate all of this information into the designs, but you know, you can pick out your key items and all of that sort of stuff and really go from there. What you wanna do for your key images is make sure that you choose the best one image that represents that item and kind of sits within your trend as well. So for example, the suede shirt, I've gone for a quite close up shot, but it is a really nice shirt looking jacket. The gilet was from a catwalk. The oversized sweater was from vintage research. The denim jacket was from brand research. You know, there's a lot of good stuff that goes onto this key items page that you can use from all your other research. You've just got to make sure that you've solidified what your key items are in the research process. So, so as you're going through and as you're making all the decisions and all your notes and all of that sort of stuff, just make sure you are writing down the key items and you're saving the images because as I say, it does come into play here. Okay, so that is it for this video. So as I said, this is part one of a three part video series where I'm going to go over a project and how to do it. So this was mood board and research for now. The next video is going to be focused on how to translate all of this research and all of these images into your designs. And then we'll go on to how to kind of pull that all together in a final tech pack. So when you're going for design interviews, you can really show off the best of your abilities. Now, this is the way I do it. And this is the way that I like to do it. It kind of works in my head and it's the best process process for me and hopefully it will work for you as well. But yeah, that's it for today's video. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to click that beautiful red subscribe button down below. Please also check out my Etsy shop where you can buy pads and vectors to help support you in your everyday design life and it really helps support this channel. Otherwise, I'll see you here every Monday and Thursday with a brand new video. All right, okay, thanks for watching. All right, bye. Tra, tra, tra. Bye.